Alright guys, welcome back to Care Services and Blamo Tutorials. Uh, going back over the programming and logic and moving on to the for loop. And uh, this one's going to be a little bit more intricate, so we need to kind of go over a, a couple things here just so you can see what's going on. And uh, here we're going to ask a user for the total of five purchases. With these five purchases, we need to calculate the total as we move along and then give a total of the five purchases. So, how are we going to ask the user? How are we going to calculate it? I know you could do this in a very simple program, but we're going to, you know, just go and ask the user this, ask the user that. Then we're going to add press one, press two, press three, press four, press five, and so forth. We're going to show you another way. This is the for loop and uh, let's get started. Alright, here we're going to set up uh, our cells. We, we're going to flow chart as we move along and actually I know these should be closed out but here we're declaring cells as our program name. We're going to go ahead and declare double price. Uh, that's going to be for each price that we enter in. We're going to uh, initialize total. We're going to go ahead and set that to zero and that's going to be our variable for adding the total each day and we're going to initialize a counter variable. The counter variable is going to go through the five steps. We're asking for the price of five trips so I need to have a variable so that way we can have that going. So here we're going to display we will display the total of five shopping trips and there's your wonderful connector again <laughs> and I know a lot of people hate seeing these but when you're working with uh, flowcharts, you better get used to using connectors and page connectors because it's going to get really big. So uh, moving right along. Here we've uh, went ahead and set up our for loop. Now a for loop is going to be a little different than uh, a while loop. You need to go ahead and set up a counter just like we did the last time. You're going to have your decision structure just like you did the last time but here we're going to have uh, a different scenario of what's going on now what excuse me but as we move along through our loop you'll see that it's the same thing guys we're uh setting up i don't know why that keeps popping up but uh we're setting up the same truth statement here and we're still setting up a false. So while the for statement is true, which meaning it's less than or equal to five, we're gonna run through our cycle, okay? Now this is where it's gonna get fun because we're gonna get into the whole process of the, how the magic works and where it's working, how it's, you know, how it looks as it's going through. And again, this happens so fast that you never see it, but in a, a, a good world, a programming world, sometimes we have to see things in action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our counter loop here. We're gonna go ahead and go through our saying that, it, yes, it's true. We have uh, nothing going on, so we're gonna add in our things. So we're gonna display, please enter your total for your shopping trip. I enter whatever that number is. It's gonna input that number and it's going to set the total that we set here to zero. It's now going to set that total to whatever we enter here. All right, guys, what we got going on here is, uh, shit. All right, so what we got going on is the same similar thing of what we had. We have, you know, our for loop here. And while this is true, we're gonna come through and display all this. We're gonna add and come back through. So basically what's going on is saying, enter your total for your uh, shopping trip. Uh, so if we enter $2 here, it's gonna input that into this. So that's gonna now be uh, $2. Now we're setting the total, which was here, set to zero. We're now setting to two, so total, which is zero, plus two equals two, right? Now we're setting the counter equal to counter plus one. Here we had a counter set to one, so you got one plus one equals two. 
and then it loops back around. So now we have a total equal to two and a counter equal to two. So which is still less than or equal to five and it comes back through and does the same thing again. So I mean, you can keep doing all this and going through each and every uh, section just like that. Uh, once we get all that going and we've cycled through and we know that we've got our counters here, we're going to come back through and we're going to enter, let's enter two again just to keep our math simple. Now the total here is now two and I've set this variable here bringing that down to two which now makes that four. The counter was two, we're adding one to it and now we're at three and then we're going to cycle right back around. And it, it's an ongoing battle of this keeps, and it keeps just going on and on and on. So now let's look at the actual program working. So here we've got where we've entered our cell one, which you know, as we done just a second ago, we entered in two, right? So we, we do that, we enter in our number. What it does is it takes total plus cell one, which is, I, put price but cell one so that we look at each cell then it goes in and does cell two so here it's taking in the total from cell one putting it in the total and now adding cell two to that total and it keeps you know cycling through there cell three it's taking the cell two total and moving it over here and adding cell three to it and it keeps going all the way into our fifth cell now we've got our fifth cell coming through and we're equal. Now we're adding in all our stuff because when it comes back through after the after it adds your on your fifth one here, it's gonna be six. So now when it comes back through, it's gonna be six, so it's gonna be false. So in essence, what it's doing is taking all these numbers and it's totaling them just like you would in a simple program but it's very module it's very you know just works as it goes you know so if you only had two cells you know it does the work for you as long as you've got your numbers right and your program built correctly it'll be correctly each time so it's going to add all these together like it would in a simple program and now it's just in one step that's looping through until this loop becomes false and then bam it's going to add all these together and it's going to take this number here, store it into what the total is here, and display your total. And then once it displays it, your total, I mean, you're pretty much done. And it, it ends your program here, and, you know, all said and done. So if we enter 2 for all these, you're going to go to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It's going to say $10 is your total. And it's going to end. So, I mean, you can hopefully see from this very fast explanation of how the, the statement works it's the same protocol as the last one you've got to have you got to set up your counter of what you're doing because you, how many times do you want it to to loop through how many times around the circle do you want to go so you've got to set up all right guys i know i stressed in the while loop you know that you've got to initialize your counting variable you know that way it's set to a, a number here so when you do your loop and you're saying loop through till it's less than or equal to five once that's done you know then come out of the loop and go down here so i know we flew through this stuff guys but i'm hoping that inside of all the stuff that we've got going on that you can see that how important it is to pay attention to where and what you're doing because that's the most important thing in, in a loop is trying to figure out you know what's going on when it's going on how it's going and you got to plan it that's why pseudocode comes into play i know everybody hates it it's a waste of time why do we have to go through all these extra steps extra hurdles believe me i was there and i mean i went the same way you know i was tired of doing pseudocode i don't want to flow chart and nothing 
and although I don't really agree with flow charting, I don't, it's kind of stupid to me, because once I pseudocode, it's the same thing. But, you know, once you pseudocode, you can flow chart in two seconds. Once you flow chart and pseudocode, your program's built. You know, the, the flow chart's just there to give you a graphical representation of what you're doing. The pseudocode is your fake code that gives you the wording and everything else. And, you know, as you move along and you get into Java, into C Sharp, C++, you're going to start doing data dictionaries. And that's a pain in the butt. But if you pseudocode, you can do all this and it takes a matters of you know minutes compared to hours so trust me i'm a pro at you know running around with my head cut off and trying to chase my own tail i understand the frustration i was there and i've dealt with it but believe me you guys pseudocode will save you so much time in the end because all it is is dissecting what the problem set is that you're trying to build a program from and go ahead and writing it out in your language and your handwriting so that you can do it. I don't really write anything, I type it. So I type so I can come over here and I can you know highlight and click and then copy and paste over in a, to uh, my compiler. So you know that's what I would recommend. But if you want to write it out first, type it out second, you know, pseudocode wise, and then take it into a you know compiler and build your program. That's what I would do. Whatever makes it easier for you is how it's gonna make it work faster and smoother. But believe me, try to pseudocode guys and try to get in the habit of doing it just to save yourself time and get your your motor running before you go through this process of beating your head against the wall because the program's not working correctly or you ran a loop that you know opted out first because you didn't you forgot to do your counter and there's just so many things and so many steps and if you write it out you plan it out building it is nothing all right so uh there's my my gospel according to jeremy there but uh if you got any questions, hit me up on the board. Let me know. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook at Care Services NC and careservices.com. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Happy coding.